On the news, President Mohammad Buhari begins three-day official trip to Russia. Kogi gets new deputy governor after Simon Achuba's impeachment. And debt toll rises to 11 as Chileans protest high cost of living. Now I am Fidelia Agoncha. President Mohamed Buhari has departed Abuja to attend a three-day Russia-Africa summit in Sochi. The event scheduled to hold between 23rd to 25th of uh, this month will focus on exploring and expanding opportunities in security, trade and investment, science and technology, and gas production. Discussions at the summit are also expected to bring fresh perspectives on some global issues and challenges like energy, development, uh, digital transformation, and development strategies. A statement by presidential spokesperson Garba Shehu noted that President Buhari will meet with Russia's Vladimir Putin to further strengthen relations between both countries. President Buhari will be accompanied on the trip by Governors Mohammed Yahaya of Gombe State, Bello Matawali of Zamfara State, and Kayode Fayami of Ekiti State. Foreign Affairs Minister Geoffrey Onyema and Minister of State for Petroleum Resources Tim Prey Silva are also part of the President's entourage. Edward Onoja has been sworn in as the Deputy Governor of Kogi State. The swearing ceremony held on Monday at the government house in Lokoja, the state capital. Onoja, a former chief of staff to Governor Yahaya Bello, was inaugurated shortly after he appeared before members of the Kogi State House of Assembly for screening. The development is coming barely three days after the lawmakers impeached former Deputy Governor of the state, Simon Achuba, after he was indicted for gross misconduct by a committee set up by the House. A federal high court in Lagos has ordered the interim forfeiture of two properties belonging to the immediate past Senate President, Ukola Saraki. The order was given following an ex parte application filed by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, alleging that the properties were acquired through proceeds of unlawful activities. Ruling on the application, Justice Mohamed Liman ordered the interim forfeiture of the two properties. He also directed the EFCC to publish the order in a national daily within 14 days and further the matter for report of compliance with the order of the court. Both properties are located in the Ikoi area of Lagos State. Well, the Federal High Court in Abuja has partially reviewed conditions of the bill granted to Omoyele Shurure, convener of the hashtag Revolution Now movement. The court had earlier granted a hundred million naira bill to Shurore with two charities who must be residents in Abuja and have landed properties within the Federal Capital Territory. The judge also ordered that one of the charities must deposit 50 million naira with the court pending the determination of the case. But at the court on Monday, Justice Ijoma Ojuku, the trial judge, set aside the previous order on Shurore's surety depositing 50 million naira holding that the surety could deposit 30 million naira instead. She also reduced the bill sum of uh, Olawale Bakari, who is Shurore's co-defendant, to 30 million naira instead of the initial 50 million naira, but she refused to vary all the conditions, the other conditions for bill. Femi Falana, Shurore's counsel, had approached the court seeking a variation to the pr previous bill conditions, which he said were stringent and could not be met. The federal government had charged Shurore with treasonable felony, insulting the president, and money laundering. The Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, NSCDC, is demanding more budgetary allocation to the agency. Commandant General of the NSCDC, Mohamed Abdullahi, made a request when he appeared before a joint committee of the Senate and House of Assembly on Monday. He said the agency is working with a very small budgetary allocation, which has made it difficult to execute some capital projects and engage more staff. He, however, confirmed that the NSCDC has been given an approval by the head of civil service to engage 40,000 personnel within the next four years. On their part, members of the committee commended the NSCDC for its commitment to internal security and asked that its budget be increased. With the 2000, 
with the 2.5 billion overhead costs approved by the budget of, of, of the Federation for 2020, the core will be handicapped and our operations will be severely affected. There is need for the review of our overhead due to the following reasons, sir. Envisage increase in fuel cost due to our plan to acquire more operational vehicles and more maritime operational equipment, such as gun boots, swamp boys, etc. Increase in insurance premium for the vehicles. Extra logistics for the recently flagged of operations of the Agro Rangers squad. What was allocated for your capital budget is just 1.6 billion. Only 1.6. 2019, 4 billion. 2020, 4.3 billion. And I observe how your men are working. Page 14 of this your document. It is embarrassing to know that up to date, your offices is being rented out to your service. And you said here harassment of your officers because where you are using as an office is not being paid to the landlord. So the landlord will come and tell the federal government security agency to back out of his house because they have not paid rent. This is embarrassing. Please, Chairman Sir, let us find a way through which we can increase their capital budget so that at least just like the police formations that have a divisional office in each local government owned by the police, let us see that the 774 local governments in this country have civil defense on building and not rent. The organized labor is demanding that implementation of the 30,000 Naira national minimum wage should begin from April 18, 2019, and as the day it was signed into law by President Muhammadu Buhari, Acting Chairman of the Joint National Public Service Negotiating Council, Simon Anchava, made a demand in a statement released on Monday. Now, according to Anchava, the request was to prevent another avoidable round of agitation. This is coming days after the federal government and organized labor reached an agreement on the implementation of the new minimum wage and consequential adjustment of workers' salaries. Meanwhile, all 23 local government areas of Kaduna State have commenced the payment of the new national minimum wage of 30,000 Naira to their workers. Executive Chairman of Kaduna Local Council, Safra Sainu, confirmed this to journalists on Monday, explaining that the payment took effect from September and cuts across all civil servants from grade level 1 to 16. Kaino said the implementation of the new minimum wage at the local government level was to support Governor Nasu Elrufai's effort at strengthening the civil service and improving the welfare of workers in the state. Kano State Commissioner for Local Governments and Chief Tenancy Affairs Jafar Rusani also confirmed the development in another interview on Monday. He explained that workers from grade levels 1 to 6 would receive a higher percentage of minimum wage than those from 7 to 16. The Nigerian Army says it's ready to launch the fourth phase of Operation Crocodile Smile in southwest Nigeria. The training, which will be in partnership with other security agencies, is expected to eliminate criminal activities on land and waterways in the region. This next report has more. To foster interagency cooperation and improve operational capacity, the Nigerian Army has organized this training for military and paramilitary operatives in Lagos and Ogun states. The event is part of activities lined up for the conduct of exercise Crocodile Smile 4 in southwest Nigeria. Flag Officer Western Command Rear Admiral Oladele Daji explains the objectives of the new exercise. Exercise Crocodile Smile 4 itself has two basic objectives which are training and operational in nature. The training objective is to practice commanders and staff officers in the art of military decision-making process, staff liaison and conduct of riverine operations. It will also practice troops on combat responsibilities in internal security operations and promote efficient joint operations within the 81 division area of responsibility. 
He also highlights the security challenges the exercise will seek to end. Issues of um, kidnapping, issues of vandalism of um, um, oil pipelines and illegal dealings in petroleum products, the issue of breaking crude oil pipes to refine them in such a way that destroys both the soil and the environment as well as other criminalities you know in that is why all the security agencies are involved but it doesn't end there as communities also have something to benefit from this exercise for the civil populace to also feel the impact of the exercise crocodile smile 4 there are plans to conduct educational outreach to all those um, uh, communities that are less privileged. You see some communities, we still have them in Lagos State and parts of Ogun State where they sit on, you know, something that you cannot really properly describe as cheers. So within the period of these exercises, exercise, you know, textbooks, notebooks, chairs, things that will make the children, you know, the learning environment conducive will be provided and also medical outreach to um, less privileged communities. The first phase of Operation Crocodile Smile, launched in 2015, led to the degradation of militant activities in the Niger Delta, among other successes. The army is hoping to replicate this feat in southwest Nigeria, which in recent times has been troubled by kidnapping and banditry. Fidele Agoncha, TV 360, Lagos. Meanwhile, the coalition of concerned veterans have urged the Nigerian government to prioritize the welfare of retired members of the Nigerian Armed Forces. The group made their appeal in Abuja at a press conference to intimate, intimate its members on the outcome of meetings aimed at addressing their ordeals. The veterans maintain that until solutions are preferred to the common challenges facing ex-servicemen, corruption in the military will remain a recurring decimal. They are advocating for the payment of the outstanding 14 months arrears owed to them before December 31st, 2019, among other things. We have captured all the demands of every association, close to 14 associations existing in Nigeria, and we have put all of them into one document presented to the government. And this presentation is having the appropriate attention. Our purpose of following up and putting pressure is so that it will not be distracted by normal government activities that does not take into cognizance that the attention put on veterans will increase the motivation and the spirit of the fighting troops. This particular purpose, in our time, there was nothing like corruption in the military. There was no time that you will see chunk of money being taken away by one military commander or the other. But because they have seen outside that when they retire from the military, whether Air Force, Army or Navy, there is nothing to fall back to. That is why you see soldiers going into all of these avarice activities. And we need these organizations to come together. That is why we created the CCV, to bridge the bridge on all the demands, put them on one document and give it the force that it demands. There have been several appeals to the government to cut down on its spending, especially in the area of travel, and channel the money into other critical aspects of the economy. To partly address this, President Muhammad Buhari has issued strict travel guidelines for public officers, which reduces escort for foreign trips and also mandates all ministries, heads and CEOs of departments and agencies to submit their yearly travel plan for statutory meetings and engagements for clearance before implementation. Political analyst Gide Ojo says this is a good step in the right direction. He is also calling on the Judiciary and National Assembly to take a cue from what the President has done. The Judiciary as well as the, uh, the National Assembly also needs to trim down on some of their tra tra travels. Even though you go on recess, uh, which is normal, recall that um, every year between July and September, 
the National Assembly goes on annual recess. There is no mandatory for you to go on uh, foreign travels for your vacation. There are beautiful places in Nigeria, the Obudukatu Ranch, the Tinapa, the Yankari Game Reserve, and several others, where they could have their holidays or vacations. And this also should be a cue by the president. The president, I don't see any reason why he has to go to UK for his vacation. Charity should be from home. In 2020 budget, the presidency voted 3.3 billion for foreign travels. This is on the high side. I think the president needs to trim that at least by 1 billion. Reduce that foreign travel substantially. Many of the international summits, he doesn't have to go there personally. He could send a minister or head of a parastata or department or agency to represent him. He should not, he should cut down on in his foreign travel. Uh News now will continue in just a moment. Stay with us. The 14th Walesho Inca Award for Investigative Reporting is open for entries. Walesho Inca Center for Investigative Journalism hereby calls for submissions from full-time or freelancing Nigerian investigative journalists whose works border on regulatory failures, corruption in public and corporate sectors, or human rights abuses in Nigeria and published between 4th October 2018 and 3rd October 2019. Award categories, print, radio, television, photo, online and editorial cartoon. Deadline, first day 24th October 2019 by 4 p.m. Winners will receive cash prizes and more worth 1 million naira. Other finalists will also be rewarded. To apply, please visit www.wscij.org forward slash 2019 award. For more information, call 0908 251 5179 or email wscij at wscij.org. Welcome back. Let's now turn to Oin Adekunle for news in business. Hello, Oin. Hi, Fidelia. So it seems there seems to be some bit of bad news for Glow and Airtel subscribers. Could you tell us more? Well, you're absolutely correct, Fidelia. The Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC, has banned over 29 million Glow users from contacting Airtel Nigeria lines. The subscribers of the indigenous network provider will be banned from making calls to Airtel numbers due to its failure to settle the interconnected charges owed to Airtel. The NCC's decision was in accordance with Section 100 of the Nigerian Communications Act 2003 and guidelines on procedure for granting approval to disconnect telecommunications operators. The ban came almost three months after MTN Nigeria banned incoming calls from GLOW users over the latest failure to pay its interconnection debts. In a bid to resolve issues bordering on tax payment compliance, tax disputes and double taxation, the Federal Inland Revenue Service, FIRS, has established a tax office for non-resident tax persons in Nigeria. In an information contained in an official public notice signed by the Executive Chairman of FIRS, Abatunde Fowler, the non-resident persons tax office will handle all tax affairs of non-resident persons, individuals or corporates liable to taxes in Nigeria. The public notice also revealed that the FIRS have identified non-resident taxpayers as very important segment of the taxpaying public, hence the need to devote specialized attention to them. The FIRS disclosed that as from January 2020, all non-resident persons liable to tax in Nigeria shall submit every return, correspondence or inquiry relating to all the taxes administered by the service to the non-resident persons tax office.
The closure of Nigeria's land borders in a bid to tackle food smuggling has been yielding positive returns, and that's according to Adewale Ajadi, an agricultural development expert. Ajadi, in an exclusive interview with TV360, says the government's decision will lead to a revival of the agricultural sector of the country. He also dispelled the notion that local farmers do not have the capacity to feed the country. We have enough information to know that we produce more than enough for our population. Not just rice. You, you keep on going back to rice. I'm not talking just about rice. Because the nutritional benefits of rice, especially parboiled rice, is really, really marginal. So, I mean, if we are thinking about the health of our people, if we are thinking about their viability and not dying, because you, you spend a lot of time um, um, eating rice, and what about the diabetic effect and all of those things that actually, what is the nutritional benefit of that rice? So you have to look across the world. Our farmers produce cassava, we're about number one in the world. We produce yam, we're about number one in the world. And a few other things like that. And a lot of these things go to waste. I mean, let me give you a little anecdote. The other day I was reviewing countries in Africa that are taking advantage of the fact that avocado is really um, um, has a great demand in the United States and it's not, the demand is not being fulfilled. And the shocking thing is that Kenya is producing avocado and exporting it to the United States. We produce so much avocado in this country. Even if, then, go to waste. then it goes to waste. It goes to waste. Look at mangoes. Our mangoes is exceptional in the world. I don't think that anybody who has seen my Nigerian mango or tasted it would ever want anything else as mango. But it goes to waste immensely. You know, you can talk about our, our, our pineapples. You can, you can talk about a lot of things. And most of our fruits, they're not really particularly cultivated. They're just available to us by virtue of an incredible blessing in terms of the soil and the opportunities that we have. So, I, I mean, essentially what I'm saying to you is that if we can get our act together, a lot of these things about rice and all of those things would, be, would not be as significant as we are making it. Let's now take a break here and when we return, it will be time to review activities on the Nigerian stock market. Stay tuned. Picking up from where it stopped last week, the NSC resumed trading activities for this week in the Reds. This time, the All Share Index sank lower by 0.22%, while market capitalization declined by 29 billion naira to close the day at 12.846 trillion naira. Let's now look at the summary of market performance for today. And speaking of performance, interestingly, latest portfolio investment reports by the NSC has shown that foreign participation in Nigeria's equity market surpassed local participation for three consecutive months. And that is supposed to, in some way, stimulate economic growth. But we have not particularly seen that play out in the market. Today, the market saw a weaker activity level. And when compared to previous session, 245.852 million units of shares worth 1.361 billion naira exchange hands. And of course, 2005. 114 deals and leading the percentage laggards today Dangote Cement uh, we also have Zenith Bank of Nigeria PLC NEM Insurance PLC and UBA also made losses they didn't quite perform very well but on the flip side the percentage um, gainers which was actually 10 gainers on the um, 10 equity saw a significant boost today and the best performance of the 10 is May and Baker Nigeria PLC of the healthcare sector with a 19 cobalt price gain. The share price of Echo Bank also increased by 10 cobalt and sold for 7 naira and 10 cobalt today. And of course, we have um, the Transnational Express PLC and Law Union and Rock Insurance PLC making a combined increase of 11 cobalt in their share prices. On the foreign since global markets now, FTSE, Dow Jones, and Nikkei, unlike the NSC, is all, and they're all closing in the greens today it was a bullish market for all three equities so that's it on business fidelia well thank you only for that update on the foreign scene 11 people have been confirmed dead following violent protests against rising cost of living in chile president sebastian pinera says the country is at war and authorities have now extended the state of emergency which was already in place at the capital to nine uh, more of the country's 16 regions. 
The protests were initially sparked by anger over metro fare hikes, but later exploded into violent riots on Friday to reflect anger over living costs and inequality. Military and police officers used tear gas and water cannon against protesters to set fire to buses, who set fire to buses and smashed up metro stations and looted shops across the country. About 1,500 people have since been detained in connection to the unrest. And in sports, in sets of five, France football on Monday began releasing names of the Ballon d'Or nominees for 2019. So far, 15 names have been released, including Kylian Mbappe, Pierre-Emerick Aboumeyang, Sadio Mane, Sergio Aguero, Frankie de Jong, and Hugo Lloris, just to mention a few. The complete 30-man list will be announced before midnight today. The most coveted individual prize in football was picked up last year by Real Madrid's Luka Modric, making him the first player in a decade to break the messi ronaldo Duopoli. Well, that's it on News Now. Many thanks for watching. I am Fidelia Agunca. Bye for now.